Welcome to March Madness Minute number 15, and today we're going to continue to look at Google Forms. Specifically, we're going to look at where your responses go and what those responses look like when they are raw data versus what they look like in the automatic graphs that are created. And then finally, we're going to end with auto-correcting your work so that you don't so you have more time to analyze your results instead of just correcting. So to start, we're going to go back to where we left off yesterday. So yesterday we created the Camus quiz and I had five responses. Um, so here's where my actual quiz lives. So I can see there's five responses. I can click on responses and go to summary of responses. And these are the auto graphs. And the type of graph such as pi or bar is going to be determined on the type of question. So for multiple choice. Um, what did the French Canadian trappers call this area? I can see all five people answered Lacamas and the pie graph is because it was multiple choice. Free response, you're going to see a list of those responses here. And then we also had a checkbox where people could choose more than one answer. And so those results are here. And then we had a drop down who bought the land of current day Camus. Um, so here's our results. How comfortable are you using Google Forms? And that was a grid. And then I can see the number of responses for each day. So I'm going to go back to the top. So here's our automatic graphs. But now I want to view all the responses. And this is the raw data. And at first, when you look at this data, you can um, things might have been going off of the page. I know I've had a lot of people say they had a hard time reading their forms. So if I click on this cell, I have an auto wrap feature. So I'm going to click on that. And this is how it looked initially. I couldn't read the answers because they went outside of the cell. So I clicked on this square before the one and the A. And I made everything automatically wrap so that it was easier to read. And then I can, um, if I wanted this cell to be larger, if I did want to read it as one line, I could also uh, move things around to make them more readable um, and just format it a little bit. So this is our raw data. Now I'm going to go back to the quiz because we want to auto correct this. And before we can automatically correct it, it's best to take the quiz yourself so that you can be the key. So to take the test, I want to go to view live form. And I'm going to continue after my video. Lacamas. Quamish. And they had, they, so they chose the area because of the, the river and the lumber. The great schools weren't here yet. They uh, built the mill, then built the town, and then built those great schools. And who bought the land was Henry Pittock. And I'd say I'm probably a four. There's probably always more I can learn with Google Forms. And I don't really need to copy, so I'm going to submit. So I'm going to close out. I've taken my quiz. I'm... Um, going to go to my responses and you're going to want to do this where you view your raw data. Now we've looked at add-ons for Google Docs, but there's a lot of really cool add-ons for Google Forms and Google Spreadsheets. So I've already gone to add-ons and get add-ons and I chose one called Fluberoo. So I've installed Fluberoo and now I want to grade my assignment. Okay, so here's where I can assign points. So if it was something that we've reviewed quite a bit, I might give more than one point for that question. And if it's something newer, I might only give one point. And I was just asking how comfortable people were with Google Forms. I'm not grading that, so I can skip grading. And our username identifies the student. I'm just going to go ahead and leave everything at one point. And now we're ready to continue. And it's going to ask, so which submission is the key? So I'm going to choose my own. And when it's grading your assignment, you're going to see it's creating another sheet here. And grading is complete. Oh, I got this a little bit on my Chromebook. I need, think I need to update my version. But everything did work. So I've got all of my names here of students. And you're going to see some things were automatically color coded. So, and I, I appreciate that people did put wrong answers for me because it's not very fun to see when everybody gets it right. But let's look at the top. There were four possible points. The average score was 2.2. I had five people take the quiz. 
number of low scoring questions. I had two questions and you'll see here's a list of my questions and two of, her, two of them are in yellow. So they scored pretty low. And so now as a teacher, I can go back and look at these two questions to see if my questions need to be rewritten or if my students need more support. I can also then look at students' names to see uh, who scored 50% or below. So I can look at that here so I can see total points that these people got. And so I can then meet with those students to see how I could support them too. So at a glance, everything is created, or everything was scored, and now I have more time to analyze and make plans for the following day instead of just going through those papers. And if I go back to add-ons, Flubrew, I can email grades and do some more uh, reporting options. So the email address is the username include list of questions and scores. So if I just want their score, that's fine. But if I want them to see the uh, questions and I can also include the answer key. So then they'll get an email with their score, the questions, the answer key and my message. five grades were emailed. And that last option we had with Flubrew was viewing reports. And so now I can see at a glance uh, my class, class grades. So thanks and have an amazing weekend.